Hello guys, hope you are all doing fine. Okay, so today's topic I have decided to take on insulin and the plan for the session is that I have divided this insulin topic into two important subheadings. One is called as mechanism of insulin secretion. Another one is called as mechanism of action of insulin. So there is a difference between mechanism of insulin secretion and mechanism of action of insulin. Mechanism of insulin secretion means how is it that the insulin is secreted. Mechanism of action of insulin means what is going to happen or how is it that insulin is going to act once it is secreted. So these are the two topics for this short session. So first let's start with mechanism of insulin secretion. So in order to understand the mechanism of insulin secretion, we need to get three points very much straight. Okay. The first and foremost thing is that Insulin is secreted always in response to glucose. So whenever the concentration of glucose in the body increases, that is when the insulin secretion is going to occur. Second thing to remember here is that insulin is secreted from an intra-abdominal organ which is called as pancreas. And inside the pancreas, the pancreas is a dual structure. That means it is having both exocrine part as well as the endocrine part. Now, the insulin being a hormone is secreted from the endocrine part and the endocrine part is what is made up of highlights of Langerhans. So, in these highlights of Langerhans, there are so many cells. One cell is beta cell which helps in secretion of the insulin. Third part is that this beta cell is having three important channels. And these channels play a very important role in the secretion of insulin. So what are these channels? The first is called as glucose transporter 2. Okay. And it is designated as GLUT2, glucose transporter 2. What is the function of this glucose transporter 2 is that it allows the glucose from the extracellular environment to enter inside the cell. Okay. The second important channel is what is called as ATP sensitive potassium channel. ATP sensitive potassium channel. Now what is the function of this ATP sensitive potassium channel is that it leads to potassium efflux. Potassium efflux. So what is the meaning of potassium efflux? Potassium efflux means potassium from inside the cell is going to the outside. Third and important, last and important channel is what is called as our voltage sensitive calcium channels. Voltage sensitive calcium channels. And what is the function of this voltage sensitive calcium channels is that whenever a cell is undergoing the process of depolarization, there is opening of this voltage sensitive calcium channels and this leads to calcium influx. This leads to calcium influx. So remember the beta cell is having three channels. One is called as a GLUT2 which is nothing but a glucose transporter which allows the glucose from outside the cell to enter inside. Second one is called as ATP sensitive potassium channel. What is the function of ATP sensitive potassium channel? It leads to potassium efflux. That is the potassium which is present inside the cell is going outside. And third important channel is voltage sensitive calcium channel which causes calcium influx and these channels open whenever the cell is undergoing depolarization. So let's see the mechanism of insulin secretion. So this cell which I am showing you on the slide is beta cell. This is the beta cell and I have told you beta cell is having three important channels. So let's try to find out where these channels are. This is the first one which is called as GLUT2, glucose transporter 2. This is the second one which is called as ATP sensitive potassium channel. Function is to cause efflux of the potassium and this is the third channel which is a voltage gated or voltage sensitive calcium channel. Now what is going to happen whenever a person takes food, what is going to happen? The concentration of glucose in the blood is going to increase. So whenever the concentration of the glucose in the blood is going to increase, this glucose gains entry into the beta cell via this channel which is called as the GLUT2 transporter. So Once the glucose has entered from outside to inside, the glucose here undergoes what is called as glycolysis. 
glycolysis like any other cell it undergoes glycolysis and ultimately like this glucokinase is the most important enzyme in the glycolysis and ultimately the glycolysis is going to yield ATP. So now once the glucose has gained entry into the cell what is happening to the concentration of ATP inside the cell? The amount of ATP inside the cell is increasing. Now once the amount of ATP inside the cell increases this ATP is going to block this ATP sensitive potassium channel. Once the ATP sensitive potassium channel is blocked, what is going to happen? What did I say is the function of ATP sensitive potassium channel? Yeah, its function is to cause potassium efflux. Now, once this channel is blocked, what is going to happen? There is no potassium efflux. That means the potassium from inside the cell is now not coming outside. So what happens to the concentration of potassium inside the cell? The concentration of potassium inside the cell is going to rise. So potassium being a positive ion leads to depolarization of the cell. And once the cell is depolarized, it causes opening of these voltage sensitive calcium channels. Now once voltage sensitive calcium channels are open, what is going to happen? calcium influx is going to take place. So calcium is going to enter inside the cell. Once there is calcium influx, this leads to exocytosis of the vesicles and what is stored inside the vesicles is insulin and hence this causes secretion of insulin. Understood the mechanism? Glucose enters inside, glucose yields ATP, ATP blocks ATP sensitive potassium channels, potassium inside the channel, inside the cell is going to increase, this causes depolarization, this leads to opening of the calcium channels, calcium influx, exocytosis and insulin. So that means the insulin secretion is dependent on glucose concentration, it is dependent on the glucose concentration. Now this insulin which is released or secreted from the beta cell, what is its function? It has to decrease the blood glucose level. It has to decrease the blood glucose level. Now let's see how this insulin is going to act on the cells, different cells and it is going to reduce the blood glucose level. That is nothing but the mechanism of action of insulin. Okay, for the mechanism of action of insulin, we have a receptor here which is called as an insulin receptor. And as we are seeing here in the diagram, this insulin receptor is a tetramer. So what is the meaning of the tetramer? Tetramer means this insulin receptor is having four subunits. So what are these four subunits? As here we can see, this is one subunit alpha, this is one more alpha subunit, one is a beta subunit, another one is also beta subunit. So the insulin receptor is having two alpha subunits and two beta subunits and the alpha subunits are connected by means of disulfide bonds alpha to beta are also connected by means of the disulfide bonds one thing to remember here is that alpha subunit is present completely outside the cell it is present completely outside the cell whereas beta subunit is partly present this part is present outside this part is traversing the cell membrane so this part is called as the transmembrane part and then we are having one more part which is the intracellular part now attached to this intracellular part is an enzyme a very important enzyme which is called as the tyrosine kinase so this is regarding the structure of the insulin receptor now where insulin will come and bind? Insulin will come and bind to this extracellular alpha part of the insulin receptor. So once insulin comes and binds to the alpha part of the insulin receptor, this causes autophosphorylation of beta. What is the word which I am using? Autophosphorylation of the beta subunit. Now once there is autophosphorylation of the beta subunit, there is activation of this tyrosine kinase enzyme. So activation of the tyrosine kinase enzyme causes phosphorylation of so many different enzymes. These are collectively called as insulin receptor substrates. These are collectively called as insulin receptor substrates and now so many effects will be mediated inside the cell. 
but one of the most important and immediate effect which takes place inside the cell is that there are vesicles here and inside the vesicles we can see these proteins these proteins are nothing but as here you can see you are seeing in the diagram these proteins are nothing but these are glucose transport proteins these are called as glucose transport proteins so once there is phosphorylation of this insulin receptor substrates these glucose transport proteins which are situated inside the vesicles they are translocated they are translocated where they are translocated to the cell membrane or to the plasma membrane of this cell so glucose transport proteins from the vesicles they are translocated to the plasma membrane of the cell so now these glucose transporters are allowing the glucose to enter from outside to inside so now what is happening to the glucose concentration outside the cell the glucose concentration outside the cell is decreasing this is what is called as utilization of the glucose or we we refer to as peripheral utilization of glucose that means the glucose concentration outside is decreasing and now glucose is utilized for various metabolic activities inside the cell so if insulin is not there glucose cannot enter inside the cells or the second thing is that if this insulin receptor is defective even then the glucose from outside cannot enter the cell so if insulin is not there that is called as insulin dependent diabetes mellitus and if there is something wrong with the insulin receptor but insulin is there but insulin is unable to act on the insulin receptor that is called as non-insulin dependent diabetes mellitus and such a kind of mechanism where glucose is entering into the cell secondary to the action of insulin is predominantly seen in two types of cells what are those two types of cells one is the skeletal muscle another one is the adipose tissue hope you have understood both the mechanism of secretion of insulin as well as the mechanism of action of insulin I, I i hope i am crystal clear in making you understand this thing if you have understood this please subscribe to my channel and share this video as much as possible thank you